Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Because uh, we, I think we have so many participants from the, all the world. And thank you for the committee for ISSR, AFOR, INPAFO, and other uh, associations that are uh, related to this conference as well. And uh, thank you for the participant to join us today. I hope you are all in good health and stay safe because we're still in the lockdown of the COVID-19. And uh, we know that uh, the virus is having the, the, the bad mutation on it. So take care of it. I would like to share our uh, experience and knowledge on this, obtaining collaboration on dentists and odontologists within forensic test work. Like um, we have so many cases in forensic in our mortuary. And I am as a forensic pathologist, uh, we sometimes have difficulty to do the identification if we only uh, have the skull and also the jaw. And we need uh, the collaboration within the dentist, uh, also uh, the forensic odontologist in our mortuary. And here, as we know that from the yesterday speaker, as we know that the role of the dentist or forensic odontologist for identification or as assessment, bite mark analysis, abuse cases, and medical legal cases such as dental malpractice and negligence. And uh, right now we have dental anthropology, archaeology, and paleoodontology as well. So here I would like to share because uh, when I go um, around uh, the world to do to join the conference, uh, we met several uh, dentists or several students and also uh, graduated uh, forensic odontologists that sometimes might be difficult to work or to be accepted in uh, to join the project or the work uh, by the forensic pathologists. So uh, sometimes there is a place that uh, the forensic pathologist itself uh, don't want to have a collaboration or coordination with the dentist or the forensic odontologist. But right now, I think because uh, we are borderless for the science, so I think we have to uh, try to open our uh, uh, cases to, to accept the dentist or the forensic odontologist as well in our mortuary or in our work as um, uh, doing the human identification. And also uh, some of the medical legal cases in our work as a forensic clinical medicine cases. And here uh, I share my cases that uh, some of the cases, because uh, when I talk this to the student, uh, then they not seem to uh, quite uh, catch the idea uh, of the, we call it the theory that you can come to uh, uh, each uh, uh, mortuary or you can come to the institution and you can uh, introduce yourself and your competency and like that. So this is, I would like to uh, elaborate more about our, our work in uh, Indonesia and also uh, around the world. Here, uh, since we study and we are become a colleagues, and then we, we make the friendship between us, and after that we do the collaboration. Here is uh, uh, me on the left is a forensic pathologist, and Dr. Akmaja is forensic anthropologist, and also uh, we are doing also the forensic anthropology, and right now I'm studying the forensic radiology as well. And uh, we have this uh, Dr. Nurtami Sudarsono, which is, she is a dentist and she learning uh, forensic odontology. And uh, we have these cases, uh, sometimes we collaborate and we consult, even at, uh, at the night time, we consult about the dental um, uh, sample that we have. So this is uh, one case is that we go. I, I would love to go to the field to work. Uh, sometimes it get bored to, to work in the mortuary. So it's fun. It's exciting uh, to have a moment that we work outside uh, the mortuary. And we go to the field, which is uh, the exhumation cases of our founding father, uh, Mr. Tan Malaka. Then here uh, we found it, uh, it's a uh, human remains and uh, we, we try to found the teeth. Um, 
and then after that uh, the Dr. Nutami will take the picture on it and then uh, try to um, examine the sample and and sorry and this is Dr. Maja and here is uh, our founding father Tan Malaka and he he has this kind of habit because uh, dental not only see the, for the ads assessment and everything, but we have to see for the habit, the lifestyle, and the tooth character of the person itself. So we can conclude as the comprehensive identification of the missing person that we're looking for. So we asking for the family and might be the friends that knowing what uh, his habit. So uh, the friends and the family said he, he have the habit like to do the pipe smoking. So uh, we uh, we have this um, discussion with also with Dr. Nurtami that we we should finding this habit if we found the skull or the jaw. So so we we go to the Kediri Selopanggung area to to do the exhumation, which is the family and. Um, from the, uh, this is a uh, very old cases, is uh, he's, uh, the family or the country say that uh, from the book of the history said he uh, already missing in, I think about 1965, around that. So uh, we assume at 2009, so it's kind of a long time. So we, we should um, expect the, uh, very um, um, bad, uh, expectation on it on the cases or what kind of human remain we will find and then um, uh, as we know that the tooth characteristic by the pipe smoking uh, we have this kind of tooth and then uh, uh, like this they they uh, sometimes they they biting the pipe as well so uh, our mind thinking that we could find the dental and then we found this habit. So it could be one of the uh, sec uh, secondary identification that we can use to identify uh, our founding father. So uh, he's, he's been, uh, because he, he's going abroad so many, uh, um, is the founder of the communist uh, party in Indonesia. So, um, it's also the opposite of the government to find him and execute him at that time. So people said he was there in uh, Barit in the Kadiri area. So here is the uh, area, the Kadiri area that it might be him. And then we do the exhumation. And right now um, we we not founding the dental. And then uh, I'm still working on the DNA by the human remains we have found. But the government and the family and the community would like him to be uh, determined and identified by the position and by the story, the long story of the searching. Uh, so they, um, they said this is a uh, where he was lying and buried there. So it's just put the, the name on it. So he is, uh, they said that identified, but for us is uh, still uh, undetermined. I'm still looking for it. And I um, next year, I would li like to bring it to the Spain, to the Compostela, to meet Prof. Angel Caracedo to, to find the DNA uh, result. As well. I hope the COVID-19 would be over soon so we can go there and uh, we, we try to retract the DNA uh, of this uh, founding father. And then uh, the next case is, is uh, I hope that uh, if you are a dentist that have a patient in forensic uh, and um, you just, uh, first is you try to make the best uh, dental record first and you're learning, you're learning, and then you take the knowledge of the forensic odontologist as well. Uh, you can study where is it in Dundee, in Belgium, in somewhere in they having the uh, forensic odontology program. And then uh, you could as well, if you have the experience and your competency, you can join the DVI team in your country or in other country that if they are opening the, 
the other abroad to join in the uh, DVI operation as well. But first is you have to get the knowledge first. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can join us, but to be the observer. But if you have the competency to do that, you can join us to do the working, to do the examination as well in the team. So um, uh, the, the third is I would like to say that uh, in our um, so many uh, big ideas of the the working uh, and the knowledge that we could share it to the community as well, to the public, and we make it awareness for them to have the dental record of themselves, such as doing the panoramic uh, recording to have their own dental record. So if you are uh, kind of um, could be a missing person because you fly so many times and you go abroad and you, you have to be aware that you have this primary identification of yours. One is a uh, fingerprinting record and dental record. And I hope uh, we also have the DNA record. So uh, when we have that, we can do the antemortem record. Then we might give it to our colleagues or our family if we might be some missing in the plane press or something in the future that they, they, uh, they don't have uh, to be very difficult to be uh, for us the DVI team or the um, person who are doing the identification uh, to identify your uh, remains. So uh, this is uh, my uh, my relationship within Dr. Alfon Quindagen from teacher to be our mentor and uh, uh, colleagues and then friends. And he also, I learned uh, at assessment from him and we having so much collaboration in the cases. So it's mean like uh, if I am a forensic pathologist, I come to the dentist or to the forensic odontologist to do the collaboration or you as a dentist or forensic odontologist are coming to us to, to uh, um, asking for collaboration on our work. So uh, I hope we are not hesitate to, to meet our colleagues and then uh, we, we talk and we make uh, some collaboration on it because um, um, is everything for our humanitarian work. So this is, uh, I, uh, I've been asking by a producer of the TV show that uh, I'm the forensic pathologist. I can uh, do the identification of someone behind the curtain and using the forensic science to do the identification of that person. And within uh, this, uh, uh, I'm only the forensic uh, 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 pathologist here, and the other is the paranormal and the magician and everything. So this is the indigo girl that, that she might found, uh, she might identify the person behind the curtain uh, by her indigo side. So uh, we are um, trying to, uh, because Indonesian have so many uh, stigma suggestion when um, they not, uh, uh, they believe uh, for paranormal and everything. So we have to crack that, uh, that cases or that identification with our science. And by this, I have uh, making some scenario of the episodes that using the forensic science and also this kind of TV show is to show to the public for awareness of what kind of identification that you can save it for the anti-mortem data if uh, maybe you were looking for your uh, friends, your uh, family that would get missing. And then uh, here I'm also working with Dr. Alvon and uh, for the dental cases I would uh, collaborate with him and consult with him what kind of uh, scenario or the identification of this uh, person that we can uh, elaborate and, and tell them in the in the this program this show and this is a kind of uh, we if we have the knowledge and experience and competency 
we're not only using that for our uh, forensic cases, but we can also teach the uh, giving the education and the knowledge as well to share the knowledge as well to the community. So they would be aware what kind of forensic work that they can uh, we can contribute to them in their daily life as uh, because uh, as we know right now is so many immigrants and so many mini missing person in this world and family are looking for it and they don't understand the forensic science they don't understand how to identify uh, one missing person so we have to share that kind of awareness and education and knowledge what kind of uh, data they can uh, save and they can uh, give to us for the collection and do the matching of the identification itself. So uh, here how and uh, you can as personal or you can be from uh, if you are a lecturer or a professor from the institution, you can come to the hospital and you can you can uh, talk about uh, how about if uh, I um, I keep my student here to study and to help for the identification of the person in your mortuary or uh, to do the identification of the dental malpractice cases and etc. You can come to, if you are a person, you can come to university and you can talk about your competency and you can come to institution as well. And also insurance company also need that. Uh, to do the identification and to understand is this uh, having a negligence or the dental malpractice in this case is because the patient is going to sue the doctor. So you can also become the second opinion for the insurance company, but you have to do it with the knowledge and experience and the competency for the cases itself. And uh, we cannot uh, work by ourselves such as uh, cases of immigrant that we have to do the ed estimation. Uh, like uh, yesterday, Christina Pereira said about the identification we do in the comprehensive way, and but uh, maybe uh, we doing the invasive way or intrusive way, and then we need the dental um, competency to, to also help us in edge assessment in the cases. And also you can come to organizations just like uh, uh, ICMP, ICRC, and also we also have the uh, pro bono organization like AFOR, you can join us. And then if we have a kind of cases, maybe we need your voluntary work to help us to, to solve our cases. So you can also come to the government uh, because sometimes uh, might be other countries that don't understand that uh, the identification or the solving the cases is very important. Uh, if you have the, uh, the network to do that, just go there and talk about the cases that it might be um, become um, maybe a big cases of the, the, uh, the country itself and you see it on the TV and you might see that you can use this data of the dental to help the uh, to solve the cases, so you can come to them, or you can come to the police headquarters uh, because uh, some of the country also the police are um, doing the CSI cases, uh, crime scene investigation, but sometimes they forget, uh, like for the bite mark analysis and everything uh, to do the uh, examination as well. Uh, that's why they they need the dental or the uh, the dentist or the forensic odontologist to help to solve the problem too. And then here, like uh, I'm a forensic pathologist. I'm actually, I have training since 2007 for the DVI, disaster victim identification. And we have the DVI commander. Uh, uh, and um, I always uh, looking for the DVI commander. Then I talk about uh, what can I help in the cases as a forensic pathologist? So you also, if you are a dentist and forensic odontologist, just graduate from your university and um, 
you have this kind of competency you can you can looking for your dvi commander and then you talk about them and you can you can say that you would like to join the the team as well and here is i also on the right side is uh, the where i working with dr akmaja at the time i was a student in forensic pathology in university of indonesia but i'm very happy that the uh, japanese embassy in jakarta working with this uh, uh, mr iwabuchi uh, from iwate where is i think akiko maybe know him uh, he is uh, uh, um, is the keeper of the museum in iwate for the world war ii for japanese soldiers and uh, he gathering the family that which is looking for the the person or the soldier that die in papua uh, in our uh, indonesian region the west papua so uh, here is we looking for in uh, several several islands small island in in samui in bia in jayapura in uh, we found uh, some uh, of the remains of the soldier from the Japan, and uh, we identify them. But um, and I took some sample for the DNA, and I uh, take a picture of the dental itself. So it might be from the family could could uh, um, recognize the habit and the lifestyle of the person itself. So uh, this is the collaboration within the uh, Japanese embassy and the University of Indonesia, and also from the Ministry of Health and uh, from the Ministry of Foreign uh, uh, Relationship. So um, uh, for our competency, uh, I would like to bolt the, and tell um, um, here that uh we can do anything to help for identification and for the cases that uh related to the dental uh wherever you are even if it's for the entertainment only or for the forensic cases itself so don't be uh, uh hesitated to do the personal networking with all the stakeholder so uh, also this uh, little bit tip and tricks for uh, if you are a dentist you update knowledge you you taking so many conference to understand what is forensic itself and the, the work of the forensic cases and then you try to update your knowledge by uh, study the forensic odontology program in everywhere you you found and um, participate in any conference and widen the network if you meet uh, some professor or you meet some leader of the dvi commander and then you can talk and uh knowing the sometime we knowing the cases by information from newspaper or from the tv and uh, uh we can uh, look what can we contribute on the cases and just try to talk with the leader of the cases uh, like uh, the police commander or uh, somebody and who who are um, looking for the cases even we can talk to the lawyer of the cases if uh, he uh, he try to looking for the expert witness to do to solve the problem of his cases as well so uh for uh, like i think yesterday already shared uh, we would like to, um, if we meet, to do the wider networks between us for forensic odontology and the dentist. And here you can join us in 23rd September and 24th September for first biennial symposium in Avor. And also uh, here I am in uh, within the work uh, collaborating, networking with international forensic odontologists. I'm very lucky to have to join the Interpol as a subgroup of forensic pathologists and anthropology. But uh, here I am alone. I'm the forensic pathologist between the forensic odontologists. So uh, there is uh, no arrogancy within our uh, forensic friends and colleagues. So don't be hesitated to talk with them and widen your networks. So I would like to thank you to IASR, for Impulfold, and all the association that uh, give me the time to share my uh, knowledge and experience on this 
and I hope this is um, useful for the participant and others which uh, have uh, joined our uh, lecture or our sharing knowledge here. Thank you.